Hi guys, Crypto Zard here. It's time to watch our viewers' top three tournament battles inside our tournaments that we host. If you want to be a part of next week's video, all you got to do is enter your tournament fights inside our Web3 tournament Discord server inside the tournament battle channel. So let's get into these top three fights. And don't forget to subscribe for more play to earn content. <laughs> And before we get into our top three, let's give an honourable mention to who lead off for this battle. I really liked here, yeah, the way how he used this card here and it's high health for the wall type that it's in. So let's get into the battle. And you'll see yeah, that this card only got to get one attack in before it died. Because of the poison wall type, the low life of this card was kind of a bad idea. And considering all these two cards died, this card here was going to save the day for the sheer fact of the heal from this from the summoner and this card missed and it's the sheer amount of life that it had that's made it win the game but that's why it was an honourable mention because I like the way how I used one of the new soulbound cards to just be a life thing and just use the life to win the game but let's get into this top 3 and for our number 3 pick we got Dark Shadow I picked this game here because I really like the way how he did a double Marty by using the Resurrect here. And you can see throughout the game, yeah, the Coral had to tank out so much while putting out so much damage. And I don't know if you lot have been seeing, but Void Dragon's been an alternative tank for people recently. Because as it gets high, higher up in the ranks, yeah, when it gets phased, it starts becoming a bit more of a problem. Uh, as you can see here, it's hard for this card to even get, get a touch onto him. But there's the first Marty, and then the second Marty. And that's just even quicker. And Koro got a head start with his, like, stats. But as you can see, yeah, uh, considering it's sniping, it should be random. Koro took a lot of the beating. But it just kept surviving, kept on healing. And every time it finally got a hit onto someone to get a kill, and that's another setup for later. You weren't too sure how the game was looking, but the Void Dragon just kept on tanking, kept on getting misses. I feel like Void Dragon is a very good low mana tank, especially for certain situations. But as you can see, Core is just an overpowered card. It's very hard to get the best use out of it in ranked at the moment compared to how it is in brawls, but. The Dragon Summoner is probably the only summoner, summoner where it's really good because the extra speed it does a benefit. But this is why it was number 3 pick. And for our number 2 pick, we got Obi. I really like this game here for the way how he used Rift Ring and the Backfire. Recently, I've been seeing that Backfire Rift Ring is a serious problem. And I don't know if you know Obi, but he's been practicing a lot of his death. At the, at the beginning of his journey of Splitter Lands, he focused solely on death and I feel like he's slowly mastering it. I like how he used the Marty as well to set up the ref ring to just be the monster that it's meant to be. But as you can see in the battle, like he gets the first Marty towards the ref ring and then the resurrect from the new summoner in death. And then the second Marty gives it 5 speed and it already set up with a nice amount of life. And it's already a problem. And this card's getting poison on the card as well. Gives it an extra damage over time. I feel like any cards that do like extra bits of damage is really great. So like poison, um, blast and things like that. It's a really good asset. And as you can see, the Rift Ring's just staying alive. Just being a monster it is. And this card, these two cards are slowly just like sniping out. A, a, a target each time and Rift Rings are staying in there keeping strong making sure this zero is protected and doesn't have to do anything but this game is very interesting and I feel like death is getting a bit much more stronger compared to how it was before but well done to Obi and this is why it's the number two pick and for our number one pick we got Slifer Red 
It's a very interesting game because it's a big comeback. And I feel Possibilis doesn't get the credit that it needs. Because the tremble on the melee units comes in handy and can be really great for combat plays. And you're about to see. Because from the rule type, it's blast. So the best thing to normally do is to go for speed. So you're doing the blast damage first. But then his opponent Bronco went for a hidden grud. So he's hoping the grud was going to do double blast to people. And Grud's an interesting card to talk about anyway, because when he gets to high ranks and he gets the tremble ability, he becomes a monster. But as you can see, the beginning of the game, it weren't looking good for him. Like The, the Grud was getting to low life, but the Goblin Psychic was getting hit on him in time. And Grud was slowly getting through the team, and the taunt was a hard thing to get around. And because there was a taunt, the recharge was getting damage out fairly easily and obviously he had a bit of um, blast protection but it was later in the, in the game and as you can see down to the last two monsters and his opponent still had his full team and then magically two die and then it's just set up for dust destruction and here's the big comeback and this is the reason why I feel possibly just needs to get more credit because without that one ability None of that would be possible possible at all. And that's why I was in the one pit because even though it looked like he was about to lose, his strategy paid out in the end. And congratulations to Slifer Red. And guys, don't forget to subscribe for more to play turn content. And if you want to be a part of the video next week, jump into the Web3 Tournament Discord and send your battles in there. And I'll see you next time.